President Trump is back to spending what remains of his time as a lame duck president fuming over his loss. A flailing plot to try to basically delay the certification of his loss in some states. A revenge campaign against actual nonpartisan U.S. officials. And then what are now costly efforts to try to simply recount in certain places where he clearly lost. Today, the Trump campaign, this is new, is actually paying $3 million dollars for a partial recount in parts of Wisconsin. The Biden campaign confidently responding, the recount, quote, will not change these results. Now, as a matter of election precedent, that is fact check true. Donald Trump lost in these areas they've selected to recount by over 360,000 votes. That's a lot. No recount in history has ever moved more than 1,000 votes. So as they say, do the math. But I want to tell you tonight, these recount theatrics echo the courtroom theatrics of Rudy Giuliani because both efforts do not offer an actual path to changing the outcome. And as I've told you around here in the news, if there was a path that could change the outcome and made this all more exciting, we would tell you. That would be interesting, if nothing else. But there isn't that kind of path. Instead, what we are seeing is the pursuit of another stage for these individuals to press what are losing grievances for some kind of audience. Now, that was part of this controversial but ultimately futile bid in Michigan, where two local Republicans initially tried to stop certifying Trump's loss in that state, and the effort quickly fizzled. So what did Team Trump get out of it? A delay of less than a day. And what did it cost? Well, above and beyond the obvious questions that face our system when politicians don't respect election results, it also costs politically the Republican Party headlines like this. They are facing, of course, two key states in Georgia. Mother Jones dubbing this strategy, quote, a plan to throw out black people's votes. Here's Milwaukee's mayor today. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows this is an attack on cities, on minorities, on places that historically have voted Democratic. Don't let anybody fool you that this is about irregularities. This is flat out an attack on democracy in cities and places where people of color live. There you have it. Let's take it right to our experts. We are joined by Neil Kotchel, former acting solicitor general for President Obama, having dealt with many legitimate or what we call meritorious claims before the courts, and Jason Johnson, professor at Morgan State U. Uh, welcome to both of you. We're going to get to Neil's legal expertise, which is very useful at a time like this. Um, but I go to you first, uh, Jason, because the politics of this are, are what the mayor and others are calling out. Don't be fooled by legal language or the pursuit of a legal stage when there's something else afoot. I'm curious your view tonight. Well, yeah, you, you can lose yourself in all the minutia and all the different things that they were trying to do, Republicans were trying to do in Wayne County yesterday, but the core of it, as other people on the committee pointed out, is just racism. That, that's it. They just wanted to say that black people in Detroit's votes don't count, um, and that's what the Republicans are doing politically. There's two different lenses that we can look at this. Obviously, anybody who cares about functional democracy, anybody who cares about how the law is supposed to operate, says, this is bad, this is ridiculous, it's a waste of time. But for Trump and for Trumpists and for the people who are still afraid of the impact of Trumpism on the sort of Republican electorate, they want to look like they're fighting, even if it's a losing battle. So it seems to be an effective method for them. It's still they can grift people and ask for money, but ultimately it damages democracy. And it's not going to impress anyone two years down the road when they have to run for office again. Neil? Yeah, I agree with that. So over the last two weeks, Trump has single-handedly made the case for the John Lewis Voting Rights Act better than anyone, better than even Jason, better than the NAACP, better than MALDEF, better than the Dems in Congress. He has launched really a modern-day Jim Crow, and his party is enabling it. So that's one thing on race. Then the other thing on representation, what's going on in Michigan, Wisconsin, Arizona, Georgia, across the country, is so fundamentally un-American, Ari. There's nothing that's more precious in our democracy than the right to vote, you know, go back to no taxation without representation and the yeah. like. And Trump is effectively pulling a King George here. He wants to tax the good people of Milwaukee and Detroit, but not give them votes. And somewhere, you know, Vladimir Putin and the ghost of Mao Zedong are cheering him on. Right. And, it, you know, as with so many things in this era, it didn't have to be this way. It certainly doesn't have to be this, this widely supported. 
Uh, there was a lot of talk about people doing what they had to do to get along with their president. Whether you find that a convincing argument or not, it's no longer logically true when you have an outgoing president and a president-elect. Now, Michigan did show also the limits of it. As, as I mentioned, we're not giving it, you know, too much uh, uh, credibility, but we will explain to viewers, Jason, what happened. Republicans were trying to block. They ended up slightly delaying uh, the certification in the area around Detroit. The argument was maybe you would just throw out these votes. Immense pressure poured in immediately from the public, from state officials and around the nation, and they then gave up. We're going to show people. Are we going to show people how it went down? I'm talking to my control room. We're not going to show a clip, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a little more context, which is Donald Trump then did initially congratulate uh, the people trying to do this. Uh, then, of course, they caved, and the loss, Jason, was certified. Fast forward to the Wall Street Journal, a Fox News sister publication allied with, uh, you know, Donald Trump on many things. Uh, rage against the voting machine. The journal says, where is the evidence? Put up or shut up. You need proof, not rumors or innuendo. Um, so they have they found their wall, their political uh, brick wall, Jason. Yeah, and, and, and Ari, that's what's going to keep happening. Look, I'm, I'm not going to mention the names of the two Wayne County uh, people who tried to not certify things. I don't want to give them any more power or credit than they had. But that's eventually, at some point, local officials are going to reach a level where it's like, this is going to damage me. My loyalty to Trump is not going to help me long term in this state. There will be a Republican Party that exists after Donald Trump is no longer in the White House. And the question a lot of people have to face is, is he going to still carry water for me when I have to explain my behavior to people locally? It, it, it's not just Michigan. We also see, you know, what happened in Georgia. You have people literally attacking each other in the same party, all in loyalty to President Trump for court cases that keep losing over and over again. Look, if they magically found some trove of ballots, 10, 15,000 ballots hidden in the, the, the basement of a post office or a Kinko's, then maybe we would have some some basis here for these conspiracies, but there are none. And the president's penchant for firing and abusing and attacking people who speak the truth only damages the credibility of his party with the independent voters that they'll need to make any sort of comeback in the future. Yeah, and that's where if the only language, right, is self-interest or politics, Neil, that's where we're seeing more and more anxiety, actually, among Republicans where Trump has a base in Georgia, but clearly uh, the state is moving. Control of the Senate's in Georgia... Go ahead, Neil. Yeah, absolutely. That's true. But I think one point to, that, you know, Jason's right, you know, you can single out those two people in, in Michigan and the like. But the fact is, Trump embraced it. He went and tweeted last right. night when he didn't know about the vote yeah. change because, you know, he hadn't done his research as usual. Uh, so didn't know they had flipped their vote. And he's going and celebrating this. We have a president who's enabling this. And yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, people like in Georgia or the Lindsey Grahams of the world who are out there trying to orchestrate some campaign to throw out legal votes, this can't be good for the party, and it's certainly not good for our democracy. And Neil, you don't find the tweets to be highly researched? <laughs> no. You don't find... He didn't, he didn't hit the law About library... About as much research as Giuliani does, I guess. <laughs> yeah, he didn't, he didn't figure out what the, how the certification process works. Um, I, I, I make a joke through the seriousness of the issues with which both of our experts have spoken to, um, but turn it over to someone who makes much better jokes but that have a point. The punchline is the moment we're living through. Uh, take a look at Jimmy Kimmel. Day 14 of the hashtag heard around the world Squattergate. <laughs> the president rejects his whining in the West Wing. He has canceled his plans to travel to Mar-a-Lago for Thanksgiving. He seems to be uh, showing no sign that he's ready to leave the White House. Rudy has asked the Trump campaign to pay him $20,000 a day for his work. Wow, he's the gift that keeps on grifting, isn't he? I love a seasonal pun. I don't know about you, Jason, but, you know, this is how he's going out. And it, it reminds me, I, I know that nobody's looking to give automatic sympathy to any politician, let alone this president. But there are two moments in recent times where the president might have gotten some human sympathy, right? Which means regardless of your opinion of someone, right, if they're sick right. with uh, an illness that can take the life of 70-somethings, the human instinct may be sympathy. When you get a big public loss, which he did, he's the loser of the election, 
there can be some human sympathy. And yet the way he comported himself through both of those recent incidents, as Jimmy, as Jimmy Kimmel shows, is much more of a punchline. And again, I want to point out, these late night hosts, um, Jason, they look for what gets the laughs, right? If there is a sympathetic tale right. of an outgoing president, they may not hit him while he's down, and yet the president has almost evaporated whatever might have been there in the, in the human empathy for him. Yeah, I mean, he's... <laughs> Donald Trump has squandered goodwill, the likes of which we have not seen in public in years. He squandered goodwill the way that Bill Cosby, Roseanne, just like somebody who people were willing to give credit to because of perhaps past behavior, because of maybe the position they were in, and yet he managed to blow it. He blew it with COVID because he was dismissive of the people who are still suffering and dying. He's blown it with this election by being a sore loser and complaining. And now, by holding himself up in the White House, I guess angrily sitting in a basement with turkey and stuffing alone or whatever it is he's going to do, why it's almost as if he's afraid that if he leaves the White House when he gets back, his keys won't work. I mean, look, you're still president and, and, until sometime in January, but him staying in the White House and behaving as if there is some whimsical chance that he could keep the position just makes him look more foolish and weak. Well, and again, Donald Trump is going to try and rebrand himself when he gets out of office. This doesn't help. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been like on a, you know, on a vacation or staying at a friend's house that's, that's so nice, it's like on that last day, you kind of just want to stay near the nice home, like, you're losing this? Maybe he's just having that vibe. <laughs> I mean, awesome. he could be. He could be. Maybe he needs to extend the, the, the presidential Airbnb for a couple more weeks. But I think at this point, they're pretty much <laughs> sick of him and they want him to go. I will say the Constitution's transfer of power clause, uh, Neil, as we know, is much stricter than Airbnb, where sometimes you can get a mutual renewal as long as you keep in touch with your host. The last, <laughs> the last item for Neil with about a minute left is uh, I did want to give you the chance to just explain to folks why is it that these piecemeal attacks on state certification would not change where we're headed? Yeah, you said, Ari, that there's no path, and that's exactly right. I mean, I was a lawyer on Bush versus Gore, and the thing there was it was one state and 537 votes. This is multiple, multiple states that Trump has to win, and he has to overturn tens of thousands of votes, not 537. Biden has won too much in too many different states, and that's why Trump's litigation record in courts post-election, he's won one itty-bitty case that didn't matter. He's lost 27, and that's going to continue. And this is of no surprise to even Donald Trump. I mean, remember, Trump rushed through uh, Justice Barrett onto the Supreme Court because he knew he was going to lose. That's why he broke the confirmation process. So nobody should think, oh, this is all surprising and this is like some conspiracy and so on. Um, and that's why you've had even Trump's own, you know, Homeland Security officials saying there was no fraud in this election. And yeah, Trump tried to fire him and stuff, but no fraud. Everything was on the up and up. This, salute, this strategy is going nowhere and going nowhere fast, and it just makes Trump look even more ridiculous than he did before the election, which is quite a feat. Yeah. Uh, Neil Kotchel, Jason Johnson kicking us off. Thanks to both of you. We have our shortest break, just 30 seconds, but coming up tonight, 